Did you know your retina can detach without any major trauma and you might not even notice right away? In this episode of OcuTalk, Dr. Allison Early will be discussing the causes of retinal detachment, the signs and symptoms to look out for, and the treatment options available. Dr. Early? I want to talk to you. Not now, later. No, now. <laughs> Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us for another brand new episode of OcuTalk. My name is Nick, and today we have a very special guest joining us from Cincinnati Eye Institute, Dr. Allison Early. Dr. Early, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me. Well, excellent. Again, thank you so much for joining us, taking the time out of your schedule to visit with us today. Uh, Dr. Early, before we get started, I, I was just hoping that maybe you can tell us a little bit about your background and your specialty to our viewers. Sure. So I am a cataract surgeon and comprehensive ophthalmologist, as you said, at Cincinnati Eye Institute in Cincinnati, Ohio. I am just at the beginning of my fourth year in practice. I completed my residency training at The Ohio State University, so OH. And I started at CEI in 2018. Uh, as a comprehensive doctor, I see a lot of patients through um, urgent visits. And so they may have any complaint under the sun and they may have any type of ocular history, but especially um, patients with prior ocular surgery, you know, sometimes these are the people who come in with retinal complaints. So. Well, perfect. Thank you for that, Dr. Early. And again, thank you so much for joining us, taking the time out of your day to visit with us. Uh, Dr. Early, for our discussion today, we were hoping that maybe you could talk a little bit about detached retinas. So what exactly is a detached retina? Great question. A detached retina is actually a separation of the inner retina from the retinal pigment epithelium. There are several different types of retinal detachments, but for our purposes today, I will be speaking with regard to regmatogenous retinal detachments. So those are really what most people think of when they hear the term retinal detachment. And a regmatogenous detachment occurs if there is some type of a break in the retina that allows fluid from the vitreous cavity to enter the subretinal space. And that fluid is what causes the neurosensory retina to separate from the RPE. Well, perfect. Thank you for that explanation, Dr. Early. And uh, now that we kind of know what a detached retina is, uh, what exactly are the causes of a detached retina? So a reg retinal detachment, a regmatogenous detachment, um, typically is the more common type if you are somebody with previously healthy eyes. Like I mentioned, there are other types of retinal detachments. There can be tractional detachments or serous detachments but those are a little bit outside of the scope of our talk today. So common causes of a regmatogenous detachment typically are posterior vitreous detachment, trauma, or prior ocular surgery. Well, perfect. Thank you for that explanation, Dr. Early. And uh, so what are any of like, the early signs or symptoms we should be on the lookout for for a detached retina? One of the most common symptoms that we hear is that patients have onset of new floaters or flashing lights in their vision. It's typically at one eye at a time. And those can be symptoms of a retinal tear or a retinal hole. And if that has already started, it can develop into a retinal detachment. So somebody might also notice in addition to the flashes and floaters, we may have somebody who experiences a curtain or veil or shadow coming into part of their peripheral vision, and that can indicate that a retinal break has actually started to progress into a detachment. In some situations, patients actually may not seek care until they've lost a significant degree of vision. Oh, wow, that's crazy, but thank you for that explanation, Dr. Early. And so, what are the testing procedures like? So how are, how are they usually uh, detected uh, by you? So the very first step with any patient is taking a detailed history. Um, in, the t in the setting of somebody with complaints, like I mentioned above, you really want to find out when the symptoms started, of course, which eye they're in, and a detailed description, because these histories can be highly suggestive of the diagnosis. And then of course you have to do a thorough examination, starting with visual acuity, checking eye pressure, motility, confrontation visual fields. 
and of course pupillary function. Once all of those have done, a detailed anterior segment examination is important. But finally, the pupils have to be dilated in order to get a thorough view of the posterior segment. So once your pupils are dilated, the first thing that you should look for is called Schaefer's sign, which is presence of pigment in the anterior vitreous. And this is kind of an early signal that there could be something going on in the posterior segment. Of course, hemorrhage or other debris in the vitreous is also indicative of a problem. Once you are actually doing your posterior segment exam, it's important to do a very thorough examination and it's always recommended to include scleral depression 360 degrees with visualization of the aura serrata because you have to find where that break or tear has occurred. If a patient already has a detached retina, that can be quite obvious with retinal tissue sort of billowing and moving around as the patient moves their eye. If the retina is already detached, oftentimes the break can be fairly easily located. It's actually more challenging to find a break or a tear in a patient who doesn't yet have a detachment. So that's why you're looking for other signals along the way. Once you've made the diagnosis of a tear or in fact a detachment, it's also important to evaluate the fundus and make sure you can tell whether the macula is attached or not. So you might see some folds or strii or just a frankly detached macula to determine whether the macula is involved in the detachment or not. Well, perfect. Thank you, Dr. Early, for that explanation. We appreciate that. And uh, I know we talked earlier about what causes, uh, you know, a detached retina. And we, we talked a little bit about like trauma and other things like that. But are there what the one question I wanted to ask were, are there any patients that are kind of uh, like more likely to develop a detached retina? Definitely. So one that you'll hear quite often is high myopia or very nearsighted patients are unfortunately at a higher risk of retinal detachment than the general population. Some other findings that you might see that predispose people to retinal detachments are things like lattice degeneration, peripheral retinal breaks. We mentioned trauma. Of course, if somebody's had a prior retinal detachment, they may have a lifetime predisposition to it family history of retinal detachment, and actually even some systemic conditions can put people at a higher likelihood. Well, excellent information. Again, thank you, Dr. Early. And uh, Dr. Early, are there, what are the treatment options for detached retina? So the treatment options typically involve either what's called a pneumatic retinopexy or surgical treatment. A pneumatic retinopexy is using a gas bubble along with either cryo or laser to actually tamponade that area of the retina against the wall of the eye to promote reattachment. Surgical repair can be either pars plane of vitrectomy or scleral buckle or both. The surgical plan is really at the discretion of the treating physician, and it depends a lot on the specifics of the individual patient's situation. So as a comprehensive ophthalmologist, I do not perform retinal surgery and I allow the retinal surgeon that I refer to to make the final determination about what treatment is indicated. Well, excellent, Dr. Early. And I, I know we talked about surgery. Uh, I kind of wanted to expand a little bit about that if we could. Uh, what are the risks involved uh, with, with this? So retinal detachment surgery is quite safe in the relative scheme of all surgeries. Of course, if the surgery is not performed, visual loss can occur. So it's always recommended that a retina that's detached is surgically or, or otherwise repaired in an attempt to reattach the retina. Um, an untreated retinal detachment is definitely a sight-threatening condition. So prompt treatment is the best course of action in almost every circumstance. Um, without intervention, a retinal detachment can progress to be a complete detachment, or sometimes it's called a funnel retinal detachment. And if, it's, um, if that's the case, the visual prognosis is unfortunately quite poor. So whoever is examining the patient needs to determine immediately whether or not there is a detachment. And as I mentioned before, it's important to make the distinction of whether the macula is attached or detached, and that has some bearing on the timeliness of the repair. Well, excellent, Dr. Early. Again, thank you for that information. And uh, we so we talked about surgery. Uh, what about post-operative surgery? Um, what what is that procedure like, and how long is the healing process? 
So most people who have surgery for a retinal detachment, it will take a period of weeks or possibly even months for the eye to recover. Uh, some of that depends on the means by which the detachment is repaired. So again, it's, it's dependent on exactly what the patient's situation is, but typically I tell patients it's a weeks to months type of recovery. Gotcha. Excellent. Again, thank you for that information, Dr. Early. And uh, so now once we're past surgery, I was going to ask you, are there long-term effects uh, after a detached retina? There are. So the most common side effect that can occur is something called proliferative vitreoretinopathy. And that occurs in about eight to 10% of patients who have a primary retinal detachment repair. It typically re um, requires a subsequent surgery. Other things that can occur after something like a retinal tear or just a break and not an actual detachment are things like an epiretinal membrane or future tears, future detachments. Gotcha. Another Excellent. thing I would mention if a vitrectomy is done, so a surgical retinal repair, uh, oftentimes patients will develop a cataract within about a year or two following that. Oh, wow. Well, definitely great information, Dr. Early. Again, thank you for that. And I know you talked about it a little bit earlier about um, if, if a detached retina de goes untreated, I, I was wondering if maybe you can expand upon that. So what would happen? I, and I know you talked about loss of vision, but it, what, el what else could happen if a detached retina goes untreated? So unfortunately, the patient can permanently lose sight if a retinal detachment goes untreated. I have seen this occur where somebody doesn't realize that what has happened to their vision is that their retina detached. It's painless, so patients may not be alarmed at the initial symptoms. And unfortunately, some people uh, feel that a certain degree of vision loss is expected as they age. Um, so I have had patients present, um, unfortunately with a, a chronic retinal detachment and the visual prognosis is really quite poor in that, in that situation. Well, again, thank you for that information, Dr. Early and, uh, Dr. Early, are there any new technologies or new developments in, in this area that we should be on the lookout for? So I think one thing that's exciting and maybe not something that everybody would think of right off the bat, but I mentioned that high myopia or high nearsightedness is one of the main risk factors for retinal detachments later in life. So many of us may be aware that there is increasing rates of myopia or nearsightedness in children. As the general population becomes more nearsighted, the incidence of retinal detachment may actually increase. So it's difficult to completely eliminate the possibility of retinal detachment in life but early interventions and myopia prevention may be beneficial in the long term in reducing an individual's risk of retinal detachment. So one recommended intervention that I think is always worthwhile to mention, especially for people with children, is to actually just let them play outside every day. So exposure to natural sunlight and focusing at infinity may actually help slow myopia progression. Well, you heard it there, folks. Dr. Early says, get your kids outside, get them out there side to play. <laughs> well, thank you for that, Dr. Early. We appreciate that. And uh, Dr. Early, before we leave today, was there anything else that you'd like to tell our audience? I think everybody really should be aware of what the signs and symptoms are of retinal tears that can lead to retinal detachments. So I always tell my patients, if you have the new onset of floaters in your vision, flashing lights, or any type of curtain, veil, or shadow in your vision, this should always be promptly assessed, ideally within probably 24 to 48 hours. The sooner that a diagnosis is made, the better the prognosis. Well, fantastic information, everyone. That's Dr. Allison Early from Cincinnati Eye Institute in Cincinnati, Ohio. Dr. Early, thank you again so much for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me.